glad you made it here today. And I tell you, when I watch the news, I get excited because I see things that are moving into place like a chessboard. And uh, most of you probably heard of uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, threat that he made to the United States that if we deploy missiles into Europe or move them into Europe, that um, he's going to attack the United States and he's going to hit the areas where uh, the orders came from, which would be Washington, D.C. So we, we just realized that we're sitting on a, a powder keg and we're coming down to the end time uh, things that we're seeing things happening in the news today that lines right up with what the scripture says. So uh, ready or not, Jesus is coming and the end is here. You know, the, the disciples, they missed the Messiah when he came the first time. And uh, we don't want to miss this time. We want to be more studious and looking uh, for his return. So uh, we're just going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to pray for all those that are not feeling well. We're going to keep remembering the Rosak family and praying for the Pelinera family, remembering them in prayer. This is something that uh, once everything settles down, it's going to really hit harder. We really want to pray for them and ask the Lord to be with them and help them. Um, Jay is doing better. We're just so glad that he's moving along. It takes some time when you've had something that long, but he uh, expressed that he had some days where he wasn't hurting, uh, like he had never been able to lay on his stomach and, and just different little things that he's, he's in. So we rejoice with him uh, in that. And also um, Paul and Danita are going to be grandparents again. And so we're uh, babies coming on Monday. So they got a scheduled baby. And we want to be sure and pray for them uh, and the delivery of the baby and everything to be safe. I also have a cousin, a uh, school teacher in Concord, great Christian couple, young couple in their early 30s, and uh, just found out that he has a tumor in his chest, much like what Josh had. And uh, so we want to remember them in prayer uh, that the Lord would touch him because they were saying that it was cancer. So we want to remember them in prayer. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So we're just going to hold these up in prayer. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for every person that is sitting under the sound of my voice. We thank you for those that are listening by way of internet. And Father, we pray that you would minister to the needs of those. Uh, Lord, even in the weeks to come as they hear this broadcast, that you would minister to them in their situations where they are. Let your spirit go before them and minister to their family, to their body, to the financial needs, to whatever they're facing in their life, God. I thank you for speaking peace to where anxiety is trying to rule and reign. Father, I pray that peace would become, Lord, our portion. We thank you for rest for those that are, are weary and tired and have their plates full. Father, I pray that you would minister to them. We thank you for touching this mother of three with this surgery that's coming up, Lord. And I pray that you would just... Be her portion, God. Be her strength, Lord. In Jesus' name, bless this uh, one that is going to deliver this baby on Monday. Father, just be with this family and minister to them, Father, and touch them in a, a special way, God. We thank you, Lord, for uh, touching this uh, nephew of mine, Lord, that you would minister to him and to his wife and their family, Father. We know that by your stripes we are healed. And there was a, pay, a, a price that was paid on Calvary for our healing, Father. And we just thank you for the provision that you made for us. And, Father, we ask you that you would just bless and touch the Rosak family and the Pelinero family. You would minister to them even in the days to come, Father. You are our comfort. You're our strength. You're our source, God, when all, everything else looks like it fails. You are a God that comes through just on time. And I thank you, Lord, for ministering and touching every need that is present in this place tonight. We give you the praise for it all in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. We're going to be starting in the eighth chapter of Revelation. 
and uh, I'm excited about uh, where we're going because we're getting into uh, the time where we're seeing things happening in heaven where God, I believe, his heart is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. The Bible tells us that we have a high priest that is touched with our feelings, that knows what we're going through, that senses us. And we, we uh, left off there in uh, chapter 8 and verse number 1 where the seventh seal was open and it said he opened the seventh seal in verse 1 and there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour and I told you last week that there are a lot of speculations that people have as to why this silence was there what was taking place what was the purpose of it and we don't have any um, indication there's not anything in the scripture nothing more than speculation about why this silence was in heaven but I believe that God doesn't take great pleasure in the punishment of people or he doesn't take great pleasure in in the wrath that he's fixing to pour out and uh, God is not one that just shoots from the hip you know we do that sometimes you know we were like well I just think I'm going to do this you know or I'm just going to give them a piece of my mind when we ain't got enough of it to give away you know we better keep all we got we gave away too much over the years so we need to keep it to ourselves but the Lord doesn't do like that he is a, a calculated God. When he says something, he isn't just putting out idle threats, but he means uh, what he says, and he says what he means, and it's nothing is, is uh, set out of haste or set out of anger or set out. He is a God that, that is calculated. And so when he gets ready to do this, I believe that there uh, is a sadness that comes over the heart of God when he thinks about what's fixing to be poured out on mankind because man was his creation. We, we were created in the image of God and uh, God loves us while we were yet sinners. You see, we just think that he loves us because we're doing so good. And sometimes we may have failed him and we feel like, you know, God just I don't even know why he loves me. He loves us because we were created in his image. And he's working with us just like we work with our children. They may disappoint us, but they're our children and we keep working with them and working with them. And that's the way Christ does for the church. That's the way God feels about his uh, family, his body, and the people that he's bought with a price, and those that haven't come into the family yet, those who are just creations and in his image, he wants us to come to the right standing between him and God. But that's a choice that we have to make for ourselves. So if I did my speculation, I believe that's what the 30 minutes was a reflection of what was fixing to happen. You know how we have, uh, we have a moment of silence when we're reflecting on what someone has went through and what they have faced. And I personally feel like that could be it. When we get to heaven, we'll ask him, and we'll all know then because he'll tell us what it was, you know. But um, I just, I believe that it's a point where he's really just thinking about what is fixing to happen. So I told you last week that the, uh, the first three and a half years of the tribulation period uh, take in the seven seals and the first six trumpets. And we get to that point where we're about at the halfway mark in there and it starts up with the seventh seal and goes into the uh, seven trumpet judgments. And so a lot of verses and uh, a lot of chapters in Revelation are what we call parenthetical chapters. They're ones that he like puts in parentheses and says, well, while we're talking about this, let me just stop and tell you, this is going to happen and it'll take you all the way to the end of the tribulation period. So while everything is in chronological order, sometimes, you know how preachers do, we'll stop and tell a story and then we'll climb out this limb and then we'll come back and then we'll go back. Sometimes we never come back, but, but, the, but revelation comes back and it, and it finishes where it's going. So uh, this is another parenthetical uh, place where he starts talking about something that's going on in heaven between the seventh seal and the first trumpet the bible tells us in verse 2 and i saw the seven angels which stood before god and to them were given seven trumpets and another angel came out and stood at the altar and having a golden censer there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it 
with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. You remember when we were reading back a, a couple chapters, chapter number 5 and verse uh, number 8, it says uh, that when the Lamb took the book, at the four and twenty beasts and elders fell down before the Lamb, and they have, every one of them having harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Did you know that your prayers are like something that's been uh, canned and put up? And it's, it, those prayers are important. Sometimes we go, well, all we can do is pray. But I'm telling you, the Bible said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much or does a lot of good. When we pray, all of heaven stops. I believe that these prayers are caught in these vials and God hears them. You know, how many times has the devil ever told you God don't hear you when you pray? Because sometimes we don't see the answer that we want to see. But you remember in Daniel that when he prayed, uh, he said at the beginning of your supplication, the commandment came forth, but it took 21 days because it had to come through some adversaries who were wrestling against them before the prayer uh, could actually get to Daniel. So you see, there are times that we pray and our prayers uh, are going through spiritual warfare that are trying to keep those prayers from getting answered. But I'm here to tell you those prayers Prayers are kept in heaven because God loves us and hears us when we pray. And I'm here to tell you, he answers prayer. He does what he says, not at our time and not when we want him to. Come on, we didn't even do things when our kids wanted us to, but we were like, I'm going to get to it. They didn't believe it. But we knew that we were going to do it, you know. But God answers prayer. He hears us when we pray. We used to sing an old song back in the church that says, I know he heard my prayer. He knows my every care. I know the Savior heard my prayer. So the Bible tells us that these prayers are called in golden uh, vials. They're called and he ke keeps them. And at this point in chapter, we're in chapter number eight. We got people that came all the way from, is it Pennsylvania? Oh, Florida. Came all the way from Florida to be here in the service with us. So uh, we're just happy to have uh, Maria here with us tonight in the, in the service as well as Rosemary. We love them. Glad they're able to make it tonight. So the Bible tells us we're in chapter 8 of Revelation in verse number 3. This angel came and he had a golden censer and he was going to mix it with the prayers of the saints. So, you know, if our prayers ain't on fire, they're going to get on fire because the angel is mixing them with the, the prayers of the saints. Sometimes we think, God, do you even, we're praying in America for things to change and it looks like things go worse instead of better. But I'm here to tell you, these prayers are collected and caught in vials and they're kept in heaven and then God does something about them. The Bible says that this angel came and he stood at the altar. So, this angel was acting in a high priest. Uh, there's a, a lot of, of uh, commentaries, and I personally feel like that this angel was a uh, representative of Jesus. Because you see, if a priest acted, uh, was only one that was allowed to go before the golden altar or before the altar and offer incense, if anybody else did it, there was a problem. Uh, if you'll remember back in the Bible whenever uh, Aaron was the high priest and uh, Korah, Datham, and Abiram were three men that got together and said, I don't know why you think you should do all this. We can do this. We can take care of it. And they were going to offer uh, incense upon the altar and do the job of the priest. And uh, it made God very angry. God said, you, you, anybody just can't bebop up in there and do what they're going to do. It's got to be those that have been set aside for the service of being a priest and so uh, he the Lord was going to destroy him and God said Moses stood as an intercessor see your prayers have you can intercede you can stand in the gap you can stand in the middle and he said don't destroy all of these people but he said why don't we just and the Lord said okay I'm gonna tell you what he said you go and tell everybody that they're going to choose this day whom they're going to serve. You either stand on the side with uh, Korah, Datham, and Abiram, or either you come on the side where Moses is at. And so Moses spoke, and he said, If these men die the natural death, then God has not spoke to me. But if the earth opened them up and swallowed them up, he said, Then you'll know that God has spoke to me. I'm telling you, that would solve a lot of church fights, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, you know, you'd be like, oh boy, I better pick which side I'm going to be on and be on the right side. 
they came over. Some people stayed over there. And while they were speaking, a great earthquake hit and the earth opened up. Could you imagine that? It opened up their tents. Their, everybody fell with them. Everyone that was in the posse fell in and fell into that hole. And then the Bible said the earth closed back up and they saw them no more because they were trying to offer incense upon the altar of the priest. And you could not do that if you were not uh, the priest. And also we find that there were uh, others in the Bible. We find that King Uzziah, and King Uzziah was one that when he offered up, uh, uh, was going in and he... He was a great king. Now, he was a, the Bible said he feared God. God was all with him. And this man was a militant genius. He invented things that was known as uh, the known world then. He was really held as a, a, a great military expertise. He built these things that they put on the top of the walls for when they shot arrows that protected them like a shield. He had things for when they hoisted rocks out to uh, uh, shoot at the enemy. He had all these, these things that inventions that he had made and he was in the known world then very famous for what he had done. And, but pride got in his heart. Do you know you can be really right with God but if you don't keep yourself under the blood of Jesus Christ you can get in a lot of trouble. I mean, he got to the point where he was so proud of who he was that he felt like he was indispensable. Uh, the praise of the people got in him. Instead of him just graciously accepting it, it became part of his own demeanor and thinking. And so he decided he was going to offer on the altar of incense. He was going to offer up and do the high priest's job. And while he was standing there doing it, leprosy broke out on his forehead. And they said the high priest ushered him out of there fast because he wasn't even supposed to be in that room. Do you know when the high priest went into the Holy of Holies every year that they had to tie pomegranates and bells around the bottom of his garment so that when he, if he had sin in his life, when he walked in there to offer up the sacrifice or to go to before the altar, they would listen for that bell because if the priest went in there and he waited if he didn't fall down dead that meant he was acceptable in the sight of God and I bet he rang that bell if I'd have been in there they'd have thought we was having a, a bell camp meeting because that bells would have been ringing I'd have been shouting hallelujah I'm still alive because they tied a rope around him if the bells didn't ring nobody would go in and get him but they would pull him out with that rope and so you all know that it had to have happened at some time or another but we find that when you went into that holy of holies that's why when there's some of the songs that you hear sung if you you might not understand it it said uh, uh, when I knelt the blood fell and it said it rang heaven's bell that meant everything was all right in your heart because you had went before God I'm telling you preachers would be more careful about how they preached if when they came before to offer before the people everything right within their heart everything is okay it is well with my soul you see that's what God's looking for he's looking for people that know what their calling is and so we find that these men tried to step out they were just a few of there were other examples but those two were the ones that I remember that were the uh, the greatest example of where they tried to offer so I wonder if this was not Jesus because remember what the Bible said he went to heaven and became our high priest ever interceding making intercession for us and so I, I just picture this as being uh, this angel as being Jesus as when he stood there and he said the whole earth has persecuted and, and come against the church and come against those that have stood for me and he took the prayers of the saints and mingled them with fire and the Bible said uh, and the smoke of the incense in verse 4 which came up with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand the Bible tells us that our prayers go up in the nostrils of God as a sweet smelling savor when he hears those prayers you know when your children call you it gets you excited when your family calls you when your husband comes home and passes thousands of women's house or, or vice versa when your wife comes home and passes all these men's house and comes home to you it excites you because this person has chose you over everybody else when God hears us praying and seeking him and going after him he realizes that we're choosing him 
And it excites, I believe, the heart of God. And the Bible said that it goes up before God and it's like a sweet smell and savor in the nostrils of God. And the Bible said the angel took the censer in verse 5 and filled it with the fire of the altar and he cast it into the earth. And when he did, there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquake. Man, we went a long ways from a silence in heaven to catastrophic things that begin to happen upon the face of the earth. When he mixed that incense and he threw it down to the earth, there were great earthquakes. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in an earthquake or not. I've never been in California or any of these places where they've had, I mean, really bad earthquakes where the roads moved and buildings fell. I was in Gastonia at the post office when we had a tremor. I was sitting at the uh, table and I was doing uh, some uh, uh, secretarial work there and all of a sudden I thought what was that I felt the whole table shook and moved I could feel the vibration I got up and went and asked people and they're like well, I didn't feel nothing so then I thought I was a little cray cray you know I thought I know I felt that but what in the world was going on and then I found out that they said we had a tremor and it was at the time. So then I ran around saying, I told y'all, I told y'all I felt it. But that was just a little of nothing. But I couldn't imagine what would happen when we would be on the face of the earth and there would be all kinds of trouble that was coming. So we find that these seven angels are standing with the trumpet in their hand. And while they're standing, they're ready to, to blow the trumpet in their consecutive order that this one angel goes with a censer filled with fire from the altar and he cast it to the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and, and earthquakes uh, that happened and the Bible said and the seven, an uh, the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to get ready to sound so we find that the first trumpet then began to sound in verse number seven. The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood that they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burned up and all the green grass was burned up. Now, you see, a lot of people think that, well, when this happens... There are two ways that people look at, uh, well, there's actually three. Some people look at everything in Re Revelation as being symbolic. Others look at everything as being literal. I look at when it's symbolic, you take it symbolic, but if it's literal, you take it literal. And when I look, this is literal things that I believe that take place. You see, when God worked with Israel before, he did plagues that came down to the land of Egypt. And to, before he let the people go. And so we see almost a reoccurring pattern of this to where the earth, as the Bible said, is crying and groaning for the day of sweet release. It's crying for that day. We've not been good to earth. We've not been good to the place. We abuse the planet that we live on. We abuse our bodies that he gave us. We, we're doing all kinds of things that I believe uh, causes the earth to cry out. Uh, and so judgment begins to hit when the first trumpet falls. And when it does, the Bible says hail and fire mingled with blood begin to fall. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, rain falling down uh, and could you imagine if it was fire falling down little flicks of fire mingled with blood and hail have you ever seen what little hail the size of golf balls can do to a car or something I mean it can do some damage when it's falling like that could you imagine hail and fire and brimstone falling down from heaven, mingled with blood. I'm telling you, this is going to be a time where the world is going to look up and they're going to realize that there is a God somewhere. There is a God who has who's tried to talk to them, who stuck their hand out, his hand out in love and mercy. You remember the story I told you last week about the judge who told the young boy who got in trouble. He said, you can get me off, judge. He said, you saved me when I was drowned in one time. He said, son, I was your savior then, but today I'm your judge. And you see, God is our Savior today, but he is one day going to be the judge. It's going to be like you, when you as a parent get to a point where your child is misbehaved and misbehaved, you said, that's it. 
That's enough. I've had it. And you've put them in the corner, put them in timeout. You know, uh, most of us, you got grandkids, you know, all right, you're going to go to timeout, you know. And so you, you get to that point where you've had enough of what's, and God is going to have his feel of this world and all the things where they've turned their self against God. And the Bible said a third of the trees burn up and all the grass was burned up. And I'm, I mean, this is going to be a catastrophic event when the first trumpet uh, begins to take place. And that's what happens under that first trumpet. Lightnings, thunderings, a great earthquake happens. And then the trumpet sounds, uh, the first trumpet. And when it does, uh, there is hail and fire mingled with blood. And it comes down upon the earth and destroys it. And then the Bible tells us this, that the second trumpet sounded. And that's in verse number 8. And the second angel sounded, as it were, a great mountain uh, uh, burning with fire was cast into the sea and a third of the part of the sea became blood. So when this second trumpet uh, sounded, uh, this, uh, the, the judgment was coming forth. The Bible says it was as it were a great mountain burning uh, uh, with fire cast into the sea. And uh, I believe, as do a lot of other scholars, that this is could be a meteor that comes down. Meteors just coming down and, and it falls into the sea. And if you could imagine... Uh, um, if you just do a study on how big some of these uh, meteors and asteroids and different things are, when they fall down into that water, the heat from that water, uh, the whatever kind of toxins could be in that that comes down into the sea, the Bible said that it, a third part of the sea became blood. You know why that is? Because it killed all of the marine life that was in the, in the sea and it filled up that part of that sea where a third of the sea, the Bible said that the creatures died in that sea because of this uh, catastrophic event that was going to take place. And then the Bible goes on to tell us that a third of the ships were destroyed. A third part of the creatures which were in the sea, verse 9, and had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed. So so this was under the second trumpet. I'm telling you, it's coming to be a, a bad time uh, during the tribulation period. And for those of you that weren't here, this is our chart. This right here is where we're living right now. This is the age of the church. And then this line right here is where the rapture takes place. You see right here is where Christ crucified and died on the cross. And he was resurrected and ascended up to heaven. And then we had the church age that started here. But there is time and a time, and we've got, if, if you're not sure about the rapture, when it's going to take place, you'll have to go back and look at my teaching where I showed the difference between the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Two separate events. Uh, the second coming of Christ uh, takes place down here at the end of the tribulation period. From here all the way, this is the tribulation period on earth. This shows you, this whole line shows you the earth. This line up here shows you what we know of going on in heaven. And this shows you what we know of going on in the underworld uh, or in hell and some of the places there. And so we find that right here, the tribulation period is. We've got the seven angels doing the trumpets right here is where they're sounding. And there's all kind of wars. There's all kind of trouble and things that are going on on the face of the earth. And besides that problem is this great uh, meteor coming down out of heaven and caught, fallen into the ocean and a third part of the sea became blood and a third of the creatures in the sea died uh, and a third of the ships were destroyed because of this uh, second trumpet that sounded and I believe that it would definitely be uh, a meteor. I don't know from Florida. Now I know she understands because I lived in Florida for years and they have what they call red tide. And when red tide happens, all these fish come up on the shore it ain't a time to go to the beach because those fish come up and they're dead and it stinks and it's not the time where you want to get in the water and go swimming with red tide there. And so I could only imagine what it would be like when something like this happens uh, on such a great, because this is just certain fish, it, uh, but could you imagine all of the, the third of the creatures that were in the sea to die where this uh, meteorite falls? And we know that most of this is going to happen over in Israel um, in, in the Holy Land. I'm hitting the wrong buttons. 
It's what you do when you put an old person with technology. But right here is where all of this stuff could happen, and, and, and uh, it will affect the whole rest of the world. Because how many know we're connected to the whole world? I mean, just because something may happen over here, it really affects us. Remember when 9-11 happened? I wasn't even near there, but it greatly affected me. And uh, I remember where I was at. I was at the eye doctor, and uh, I wanted to get home. I wanted, my, uh, I wanted to get home, you know, just get home. It'll be all right at your house. Isn't that crazy how you think? It'll be all right if I can get to my house. But I, all of these things happened, and I wasn't seeing anything that the people in New York were seeing. So you see, we, we realize that we are connected um, as a world and we go through things here that's going to affect everybody and it's going to have ripples to where it comes and affects the rest of the world. So now we're going into the next slide that I've got up. We're talking about uh, the third trumpet in verse number 10. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and, op and upon the fountains of water see before it was affecting the sea now we're going to the fresh water to where it's affecting the fresh water and it fell upon the rivers and the fountains of waters and the name of the star is called wormwood and the third part of the waters became wormwood and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter and so we find that this is prophecy this has been prophesied before it ever happens before anything happens um, they have an asteroid that is coming this way they've been looking at it since February of 2007 and they named it wormwood and these are people that are not Christians but they named this wormwood and the, and uh, I looked at some of the more updated things to see where it was at because uh, this is when I made the PowerPoint back years ago when I, I started teaching on Revelation and I bought the, the paperwork with me and so it's uh, uh, quite involved as you can see where it talks about all of the studies of what the scientists are looking at and what they're uh, expecting with this asteroid that could come in and hit the earth and when the Bible tells us that when it when it comes uh, it's going to hit the waters and it's going to make the fresh waters bitter now I don't know now we already got problems going on at the sea and now the fresh water is going to be bitter y you can you imagine how w we can't survive without water without good fresh water it's going to create complete pandemonia over that part of the earth whenever this thing falls into the fresh water and it contaminates the water you just can't imagine something of this magnitude happening. But I told you several weeks ago how that when we got in a flood in North Carolina, we were going back to Florida, and we got on Interstate 75, and it got shut down behind us and in front of us because it was covered with flood, and we got off at an exit, and we were trying to find a way to go around out in the country. They said every road is completely flooded. And, and all the food was running out. Everybody went in Kmart and it looked like they just raked it off. Canned foods, the restaurants were empty. I mean, it was, a, it was like a twilight zone thing. I couldn't imagine that happening. There's a lot of things that we look at this and go, how could this ever be? What could happen? But I've seen some of those times. Some of you probably got examples of things that you've lived through and realized that things happen that you're like, this is like a weird spooky show you know something that we've watched at night on the twilight zone that you can't imagine it happening but I'm here to tell you these are things that have been prophesied and they're going to start happening so when loved ones if you're watching this video and you're seeing this stuff happen you need to keep watching the rest of them to find out what you need to do and where you need to be because you see time is coming down to an end when Putin made his threat today and said if the United States does this, if we do take our, our uh, missiles and our, deploy our stuff over to Europe, he said then we're going to attack. And he said, I know that if y'all can count, he was real smart. He said, I, can, I know you can count. Well, you need to count how powerful and strong our military is. And we're going to send things back to the headquarters, which would be Washington, that made these decisions. We're not going to start the attack, but we will retaliate if you do this. So it was a threat. So you realize we're sitting on the verge of a World, a world War III. We don't understand sometimes all the stuff that's going on around us that we can't 
can't see. But I'm here to tell you, we need to put our hand in the hand of a God who can calm the troubled waters. He rains manna down from heaven. He'll take care of us. But the good news is you need to be ready because by all indications of the scripture, I see that the rapture of the church is going to take place before the tribulation period. Get ready. Get ready to go. Somebody said, what if he comes in the middle? Well, you better really be ready. If he comes at the end, you better still be ready. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter when he comes. Be ready to go because in an hour that you think not, the Son of Man comes. And if people uh, that believe the rapture would be in the uh, middle of the tribulation period, they would almost be able to predict when the, tribula when the rapture was going to come. And how many know the Bible said no man knows the day or the hour? If we knew he was going to come at the end of the tribulation period, well, we could say, well, you know, this is when the Antichrist rose into a power and authority, so we can count seven years and we'd know when the rapture was. So you see, any of those times, you would be able to predict when the rapture would take place. And no man knows the day nor the hour, only the Father which is in heaven. So uh, that's just one of, that's just a more... Uh, lower key thing about why I believe that the rapture takes place but that's just one obvious one right off the top so we we see many scriptures where the Bible talks about he has not appointed his children unto wrath in, Thessal in Thessalonians and this right here is a time where we're going to see the wrath of God that has been poured out upon those people who have not believed you see, some people say, why do you go to church every Sunday? Why do you put your money in down there? Why do you do Because I'm here to tell you, there is a payday coming after a while. And whatever I give now ain't nothing to the return that I'm going to get. It's worth it to be right with God because this thing is winding down. And this thing is coming to an end. And our end will be just the beginning of a new phase and a new place. And I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to that. So in the third trumpet that this wormwood uh, uh, star named wormwood fell and when it did uh, many people died because of this bitterness of the water and because of this this uh, uh, wormwood that fell into the fresh water so then we go to the next one and it is the fourth trumpet and let's look at the fourth trumpet and the fourth angel sounded and a third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and a third part of the stars so that the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise so we see for the uh, fourth trumpet when it sound it affected our lighting system our sun and you know when you start affecting the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun you start affecting the whole atmosphere people that go by the almanac understand that there are certain seasons and times where the animals feed and where the animals sleep and where the, and everything is controlled by that the whole system is going to be thrown off and the Bible said a third part of the sun was smitten and a third part of the moon and a third part of the sun and it even affected that day and night because of it uh, because we're it's going to be a time where the wrath of God is, and the anger of God is going to be poured out like people have never seen. You know, we're living in a time where we want to be all inclusive of everybody. We don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Come on. We're letting a lot of stuff go on in America, and I think the church is going to have to shake itself and wish not that the Spirit of God's departed. We're going to have to wake up and say, you can't murder babies anymore. I mean, no, on May the 4th, they're going to show on those big screens downtown, I heard, I haven't checked this to see how true, but I heard tonight just when I was walking in the church, so that's why I'm telling you because I can't keep a secret. They're going to put it up on May the 4th in Towns uh, Square in New York, and they're going to show uh, a baby in 4D and let people see that this is not right. I mean, how many know God judges a land for shedding innocent blood? And the church has got to wake up. We've got to not be afraid that we're going to hurt people's feelings. And we've got to stand up for what the Word of God said. That's why I got so excited with Pastor John's message. I'm telling you, it lit a fire under me. Because I'm like, that is what we need. We need to become militant and realize that this world is going to hell in a handbasket. And while we can sit around and just play church and come in like a clubhouse for the saints, people are going to hell left and right. And we've got to stand up and sound the alarm and let people know Jesus is coming soon. And they might think you're crazy and they may think you're not, but there's going to be one day they don't think it. 
And I hope I'm not here to see that. I don't plan on being here. But I'm telling you, they, one day you won't be able to say I told you so because you'll be gone. But you know what? They're going to realize it was true. What they said was true. So when this angel shined, uh, sent his thing, it affected the sun that shined and the moon and the stars and, and all of the things at night. Now, I live out in the country. And when I go out there at night to walk my dogs, uh, uh, there were a couple houses before uh, Ryan's house was there and another house down there was dark. I mean, I'd walk out there and there's coyotes out there and you could hear a group of them like, oh, you know, and I pictured Dracula. He was out there and all of them, you know, and I'm sitting here thinking, oh, come on, dogs, y'all look like tidbit snacks for this dog. Come on, let's hurry up, you know, and uh, uh, so I just, you know, was wanting to get back in the house. And I couldn't imagine the total, utter blackness to where you looked and you saw nothing, couldn't even see your hand in front of you. They're not going to trust me with this equipment if I don't quit doing that. Let me put it down. I get too wired up. But, you know, when, when you start thinking about total blackness and darkness, I'm here to tell you I don't want to be here during that time. I want to be gone. And, and so we noticed that while this was happening, there was all kinds of, uh, of things, earthquakes, fires, and the water system, and now the lighting system of the natural lighting system of the earth. And the Bible says uh, that there was going to be a third part of it that was going to be affected of all the sun, moon, and stars. And it was causing men, probably their hearts, to be failing them for fear. Verse 13 says, I beheld, and there was an angel flying, through the midst of heaven and he was saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other uh, voices of the trumpet and the three angels which are yet to sound so we find that this angel was flying across the heavens and he was yelling with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth meaning there were three more things that were were fixing to happen uh, that was going to cause great utter uh, despair upon the face of the earth and the Bible says and we're going to go on into chapter number nine the fifth trumpet was going to sound and we find that the, the, the woes that were taking place uh, uh, were uh, woes that uh, the first three tr of trumpets or four trumpets affected the material ground and the earth and the sea and the vegetation and the things like that. But this next trumpet judgment that's series that were coming, the next three, were going to affect the uh, moral creation. It was going to actually uh, literally affect men where they were at, not just what they were seeing seeing around them the places where they lived and so the Bible said the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven upon the earth now I want you to notice the difference when he starts talking about this stars the Bible said and to him to him was given the key of the bottomless pit so this star that was fallen was not a literal star out of heaven. Remember the Bible talks in several places that the angels were considered the stars of heaven, that Lucifer was cast out of heaven and the stars of heaven fell with him. And these were fallen angels that had fell. So angels are, are noted as being stars that come down. And we know this star is actually a person because it gives him a personal pronoun. And it says, And uh, I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit now this was not a fallen angel this was an angel of God and he was given authority he was given the key to the bottomless pit God ain't going to give no fallen angel the key to the bottomless pit because they've already been proven that they can't be trusted they'd go down and unlock the whole system and try to let everybody out which wouldn't be a problem to God, but God ain't going to have no chaos going on. He's going to keep reins and things set where it is. And so the Bible tells us that this angel is the one that was given the authority, that's what a key means, uh, of the bottomless pit. And he opened, verse 2 the, of chapter 9, the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit and a, as a smoke of a great furnace, uh, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke so we find that that there was so much smoke that came up out of this pit and I believe that this is a, a uh, 
I believe this is not symbolic. I believe this is literal, something that will literally happen. Because did you know in the book of Isaiah during the millennial temple when it's set up, there are actually going to be portals open in the earth where people can see people in hell to help detour people from making the choices to rebel in their heart? Because see, during the millennial period, there's going to be living people here. We will be, this is the millennial period right here at this green part, the new heaven and the new earth. The Bible tells us we will be kings and priests. We will be ruling over those. He said, if you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many things. We're going to be kings and priests and we're going to rule with Christ for that thousand years. Well, who are we going to rule over? It's going to be natural people that have made it through this part without taking the mark of the beast uh, and they are going to enter into the millennial kingdom and nations are going to be judged for how they treated Israel. Remember when, and when we hear the, the thing where it says, I was uh, hungry or sick and in prison and you visit me not I was naked and you clothed me not and he said inasmuch as you did it to the least of these my brethren you did it unto me he's going to separate the nations right to left just like and see we we always take that scripture and we make it like the judgment like when we die we're going to stand before God and he's going to put the sinners on the one side and he's going to put uh, the the good people over here but if in the judgments they're two separate judgments. We're, we're not all judged together. There's going to be, and here's another big can of worms I'm opening, so hang on, put your shoes on and run with me. There's going to be a judgment seat of Christ, and that's where Christians are going to stand. We're going to stand before the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to stand before God, and we're going to, um, not the Bema, we're going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. The Bema judgment is the one that happens right here at the end of the, the times where God is going to, the wicked are going to be, hell's going to give up its dead. You find this in Revelation chapter 20. The sea gives up their dead. People in the urns, Diana asked about, if they're not right with God, all of these people that are wicked dead are going to be judged at the great white throne judgment. But the Christians are going to be judged at the right here where you see this, this throne right here. This is the judgment seat of Christ. That's why we're going to give an account for everything we do in our body. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, Things we did that we think, oh, I did this, I'm a good person, I preached 100,000 messages. If, if I did that and I did it for my own glory, or for my, it's going to go through the fire, the Bible said. It's going to be tried by fire, and some things are going to come out pure gold, and some things are going to burn up in the fire. One pastor in Lakeland, Florida that pastored the large assembly of God down there, Pastor Carl Strader, he said he went to bed and he had a dream and he dreamed that he was standing before the judgment seat of Christ right here where the Christians are judged. And he said all of the works and the things he had done, had a 10,000 seat church and did all this great work. He said the Lord he showed all the works and the things he'd done and when it went through the fire, there was only enough come out to fill up a thimble. That's all he had left. And I thought, you know, that's why it's important that we have good works, that we do that. Good works don't get you into heaven, but you're going to be judged according to your works when you get there. And you're going to receive crowns for what you've done. There's a payday coming. I'm putting my time in. We used to sing it in church. Put your time in. Payday's coming after a while. Put your time in. Payday's coming after a while. You see, I'm putting my time in. And I'm going to get paid. I'm probably going to have a lot of stuff burn up for my nonsense. But I'm trying to do some really good stuff to where it's going to be honest and pure from the heart to where I'm not helping people to look good. But I'm helping people because I genuinely love people. Those are the kind of things we're going to be rewarded for. He said, if you give a cup of cold water in the name of a prophet, you're going to receive a prophet's reward. When you do things for the church, for the man of God, for the minister of the house, when you do those kind of things, God takes note of it. When you help the homeless and the hurting and the broken and people that can't help you back, God God will bless you for that. Put your time in. Payday's coming. We're gonna, and when we stand before God, it won't be what causes us to enter into heaven. What causes you to enter into heaven? 
the blood of Jesus. That's it. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that's what gets us into heaven. But after we get there, we're going to give an account for the things that we've done in our body. And so we want to do it. And do you know that whenever the great white throne happens uh, and the Bible tells us that, that death and hell, uh, they're going to give up their dead and they're going to stand before the throne of God, uh, the great white throne judgment, there'll be no Christians there at that one. These are just sinners. There's two separate judgments, one for sinners, one for Christians. And so when they come up before then, they're going to be rewarded according to their works. So the more evil a person is, the more punishment they're going to receive in heaven. A lot of scriptures I can give you on that. whole sermon I've preached on uh, the degrees of judgment and what Christ. Remember he told uh, Pilate, he said, He that has delivered me, unto, delivered me unto you has committed the greater sin. And when you look that word greater up, it means to a degree. It's measured. So God measures the sin. He said it will be more tolerable for this city than Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment. It means to a degree. There's a lot of scriptures that talk about you're going to get rewarded, whether good rewards or bad rewards. We're all going to be rewarded according to our works. So when you see somebody that looks like they're just the most heinous sinner there ever was, awful, terrible, I'm here, don't, don't begrudge them. Don't, don't, there are days coming where they're going to stand before God if they don't get it right, and they're going to give an account for it. That's why we got to reach the lost. That's why we got to warn them that there's a judgment coming and there's, there's trouble that's coming. So when we, when we stand before God, there is going to be a time where he is going to judge the nations. And when he judges the nations, the nations, he's going to separate them. And this is going to determine if they're going to be allowed to go into the millennial kingdom right here. What, whatever they did, how they treated Israel how they treated God, how they looked at the word and the things of God, how, what their heart was like, whether they have the mark of the beast. How many know if you have the mark of the beast, you ain't going? You have the seal of Satan that is on your forehead, and you will not go into heaven if you've had that happen. Um, and then I want to kind of talk to you right here since we're talking about this, about the resurrections. There are uh, two main resurrections. There's going to be the main resurrection uh, of where we have the, the judgment here and the judgment here. So those are like, the, this is considered in the first resurrection. Everybody from here all the way back to here are going to be in the first resurrection. The wicked are going to be part of the second resurrection because they're not, remember we told you they weren't going to be resurrected. They're going to come up by themselves. So when we're looking here at the two resurrections, <coughs> excuse me, the first resurrection is completed before the millennial, before right here. When the last tribulation saint dies, when people who get saved during this time who realize, you know who most of them will probably be? They'll probably be people that were raised in church but got away from God and got out there and realized, oh, this is what grandma talked about. This is what mama told me. This is what Aunt Susie said. This is what, this is, oh, I, this is, I've missed the rapture of the church. This, we're living in the last days, and they will not take the mark of the beast. Some of them will not love their lives even to the death. And so they will die, and they will be known as tribulation saints. There will be a lot of Jewish people whose eyes come open during that time, and they will accept Christ, and they will die a martyr's death, and they will be a tribulation saint because they got saved during the tribulation period and then they died and uh, they're waiting as souls under the altar. We talked about them last week. This is such a deep subject and it's like I just feel like I'm throwing you all kinds of stuff everywhere and I hope you're able to play ping pong and catch them and bounce it back and let's keep it going. But I, it's, it's, I'm trying to go fast too and that makes it even harder. So we have the first resurrection is completed and it's made of all the righteous dead from Adam all the way through until the end of the tribulation period. And then the Bible tells us that there is a, another rapture or another uh, uh, resurrection and it's going to be a thousand years later because you see from this point right here 
to right there is a thousand years. That's a thousand years right there. And this is where the millennial kingdom comes down, where Christ sets up and the new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven and, we're, and it comes down to the earth and we're here and we're uh, living on the earth. There'll be always be summer, winter. There'll always be seasons. Pastor talked about that on Sunday. There'll always be the different seasons that take place. And... Uh, there will, then there will be a judgment that takes place at the end of that, and that's when the second uh, resurrection takes place, uh, is with the wicked dead. So I'm going to stop there because there's a whole lot more I could go on. There's a, I'm going to just go through this really fast. There are temporary resurrections. These are people that died and were resurrected, and, uh, but they had to die again because they didn't have a new body. They just had a regular body, came back into their own body and was, uh, and was resurrected. And so when people are permanently raised never to die again, that's what we're talking about when we say resurrection. There is going to be a resurrection right here. And that's, that's where I have hope. That's where I'm going to see my mom and dad again. That's where you're going to see Jeremy again. That's where you're going to see your loved ones. People that died in the faith, that we're going to see them again. That's the kind of God we serve. He understands that death hurts, but he's going to reunite us together. And I'm telling you, I can't wait till I get there. I can't wait to see people that have passed on and are waiting, moms and dads and everybody else. I still think about Mama Pellinero every time she'd go, why didn't you preach while you was up there? I, well, I'd love to hear you preach. I said, well, your son's got to preach. Oh, he can preach anytime, she said. <laughs> Of course, I love that, you know. I just ate it up. But, uh, you know, we're going to see these people again. Life is just temporary here, but it's going to be eternal when we get on the other side because we've got a God that's got a plan. And I love it when the plan comes together. Be encouraged. Be of good cheer because he said, I have overcome and you can overcome too. And I'll tell you, there's going to be a, a great reunion day because when we die in Christ, we're going to be resurrected again unto life. And I'll tell you that I'm just excited about that. So uh, the time went by really, really fast tonight. But um, if you have questions, write them down. If I went over something really fast and you want me to go back over it again, just write it down and, and I'll clarify it. Um, because like I said, if, I, if you only knew the thousands of hours that I put in over the past ever how old I am, so many years of my life. I mean, I, I have studied it and studied it, and when I look at, at uh, uh, current history, I mean, current events in the news, it, it just makes me go, oh, my. Uh, looking at pulling out of Syria is a great prophetic thing, it's like where Trump is talking about pulling out of Syria. It, it will just set things up as a chessboard. I mean, so when you look at these things, you realize that, that God has got what he said is going to happen, you know, and, and I'm just excited because I realized that we're living in a day that other prophets just desire to look in and to get in to see. So I hope that was clearer than mud, and I hope you retain something from it and realize that um, there's, a, there's a day coming when we are going to stand before God, and we're going to give an account for what we do. That's why, be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful, little hands, what you do for the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little mouth, what you say. Come on, because we're going to give an account for every idle word. Amen. Ooh, you quiet people are blessed because you don't have to worry about it. But us talkers, don't get behind me in the line because I'm not either. <laughs> wow. I'm praying not, but I'm telling you, it's, it's the truth. I mean, we're going to give an account for what we say and do. And if, if we give an account for every idle word, what would we give for every intentional word? I don't ever want to hurt people. If I do it, I don't mean it. It was just some blind side on my part because I'm telling you, we got to help each other make it home. Just a few more days to labor and we're going to be home. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank God for you being here in the house of the Lord tonight. And.